What is the current state of affairs in Pakistan? Pakistan is suffering from a great deal of internal instability. Uh, the security situation has uh, dramatically worsened over the last two years. There's been a sharp increase in terrorist attacks and deaths from terrorist attacks uh, since 2007. There's been political infighting between the main uh, factions, the main parties that dominate uh, Pakistan's political life. And to top it off, there's been uh, major challenges with the economy. Uh, the Pakistani government facing a liquidity crisis, uh, being uh, unable to pay some of its bills, and then at a popular level, people experiencing uh, high prices of food and, and fuel. All of these add up to a very combustible mix. What is the current role of the United States in Pakistan? Well, currently, the United States has played a quiet role in mediating between two different factions in Pakistan, uh, the government led by uh, President Zardari and an opposition leader, Nawaz Sharif. So it's been playing a very effective, quiet role behind the scenes, trying to uh, head off uh, a political crisis uh, that came to a head about a week or so ago. In addition, we've been offering economic assistance to the, uh, to the government and to the people of Pakistan. And then, most importantly, we've been conducting um, some military operations, targeted military operations, largely in eastern Afghanistan, but some of these have extended into uh, Pakistan, in particular with predator drone strikes. These strikes are actually very controversial. Uh, on the one hand, people say that the, some people say that these uh, have been effective in eliminating some of the terrorist uh, leaders from the battlefield. On the other hand, the risks associated with these include the blowback and the deep unpopularity of these strikes and the concerns expressed by the Pakistani government. What can we do to help stabilize Pakistan in the region? Well, the most important thing that we can do is to look at Pakistan as a challenge that requires the full range of U.S. powers, uh, our military power, our political power, and economic power, um, in a comprehensive strategy, a sustainable security strategy, if you will. Uh, I think Pakistan is probably the best test case of this, because there's no way that the U.S. is going to have uh, a very large military presence on the ground in Pakistan. So we need to look at how we can work politically, diplomatically, and economically to help the country stabilize itself. I think in the coming months, you're going to see an unveiling of a strategy that includes tripling economic assistance to Pakistan, which is a great idea. Uh, Vice President Biden had supported this. Uh, the Kerry Luger legislation on Capitol Hill supports this. But all of this is easier said than done. Once we triple economic assistance, there's a difficult challenge of how do we actually make that economic assistance effective, make sure it's not lost to corruption, make sure it gets into the hands of ordinary Pakistanis to help improve their lives. So that's item number one, economic development assistance. Second, political uh, political transition and political assistance, too. Pakistan is a nascent democracy. For its 60 years, it has been largely dominated by a security sector. Uh, and in some instances, we've been beholden to individual leaders like the former president, President Pervez Musharraf. I think this new administration, the Obama administration, is trying to move beyond this addiction to dictators and diversify our relations with, with a range of actors in Pakistan. All of this, again, is easier said than done. And trying to help support the civilian government, I think, will be a key mainstay of the strategy. And it will require a strong diplomatic and development assistance approach.